is but a song we sing Fears away we die You can make the mountains ring Or make the angels cry Though the bird is on the wing And you may not know why People now Smile on you brother Everybody get together Try to love one another right now Some may come and some may go And so you will surely pass And when one that left us here Returns for us at last We are but a moment's sunlight If it ain't in the ground Come on, people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together Try to love one another right now Everybody get together, try to love one another right now. Everybody get together, try to love one another right now. And if you hear the song I sing, you will understand. and fear all in your trembling hand just one key unlocks and bow it's there at your command come on people now smile on your brother everybody and love one another right now Come on, people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together And try to love one another right now Right now
That was for you. Uh, that's the best I could do. Anyway, nice to nice see your face, and great to see you, Sue Alana. We really missed you a lot. Um, and here's Reverend Sandy. And Terry as well. And Karen and Bob are here also. Yay. Uh, well, good morning, everyone, and, and welcome here to Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center. It's so wonderful to see your beautiful faces, to feel your presence here in my heart and here in all of our hearts as we gather together across the miles. For those of you who are joining us via our live stream service, we're so grateful that you are part of this spiritual community uh, today and each day that you join in. Here at Unity of Michiana, we are a heart-centered, um, multi-generational, and a diverse spiritual community, and we're dedicated to teaching and practicing a positive life approach on our spiritual journey. And our vision is a world that is united in loving acceptance, celebrating inclusivity, harmony, diversity, and awakened consciousness. Since this is the first Sunday of April, uh, we want to um, invite those of you who have birthdays who are online to go ahead and post that your name for Susan so we can acknowledge you a little bit later on when we sing happy birthday and, and bless those of you who have uh, your birthday in the month of April. And in unity, in that consciousness of the light, the presence that is inherent in each and every one of us, that we acknowledge that Jesus as teacher, as way shower, as rabbi, exemplified, lived his life, and taught that higher consciousness that we now call the Christ consciousness, we start the service by lighting that Christ-like candle. So I invite you to just let that light uh, shine within you as I light the candle. And so we take a moment to just breathe, ah. to remember that we are all part of the breath of all creation, or the breath of infinite spirit. And as we breathe, it brings us present to right here and right now, open and receptive to the flow of that light, that consciousness, that greaterness that is within and all around us. It connects us to each other. It lives within the heart of our being. And for this time, with open minds and hope and hearts that we receive inspiration, upliftment, connection with each other, we are so very grateful and we say thank you. Yahweh, breath of life, divine, pure being, Mother, Father, God. Amen. And now we'll invite our youth to come forward. Thank you. And I always invite us all, those of you at home, those of you here in the room, just to rub your hands together. Feel that life energy because it's powerful. It's really powerful. And it puts us in touch with the flow of, of divine energy. And so as we do that, we just beam all of that energy at our wonderful youth who are here and those who are not here today also. And to little Ella who's back in the room. Is she taking a little nap right now? Okay. So we surround Ella in that light also. And we say... We see the divine light shining in you. And we hold you in our hearts with love. Go have a wonderful time today. And I'll turn it over to you, John, to introduce our guest and 
Pardon me? Oh, birthday. See, I always forget. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. So anybody who has a birthday in April, Susan, did you? Um, thanks, John. <laughs> I announced it, and then I forget it. There we go. Anyone here in the room who has a birthday? Terry, could, would you come forward? Yeah. Let's, let's see your handsome, smiling face. And, and oh, do you? Well, John's going to play happy birthday to himself and everybody else. Susan, do we have somebody who posted? We don't, but I wanted to mention Kenny McCain has a birthday. In oh, birthday. Kenny. Happy birthday to Kenny. Okay. Well, come on up here, Terry. Yeah, go ahead, John, and John will just... <clears throat> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now, God is blessing you So let's rub our hands together and for Connie, uh, for, for Kenny and, and John um, and, and, and Terry, and let's just hold that light. There you go, John. Just There we go. And, and we just beam our light and our love, and we say, we see you walking in the light of highest consciousness. We see you walking in the light of Christ's consciousness. And we know that you are blessed on this wondrous birthday month. And we know that you are blessed. And so it is. Okay. Thanks very much. Happy birthday to all. And now, John and, and uh, Rachel, it's wonderful to have you. So I'll let John take yeah, it away. I, I want to introduce you all to Rachel Eichhorn. She's, uh, Hello. You know, we've been playing together at, what, 10 years maybe? So yeah. it's almost becoming like an old friend to me. Yeah. But uh, she's a wonderful spirit. Um, she's definitely feels universal truth which i believe our church is about so she i think she fits right in spiritually and uh is a great soul singer um, we've been in several bands together so anyway sing along here we go Oh, 
the next thing to do Oh, I know I'm gonna be everything new I'm through crying I'm through waiting I'm through hoping I can't stop And I'm through longing For the next thing to do All I know It's gonna be everything new And I'm too dreaming And I'm too dreaming That life I had Was ever coming back No more wishing Someone else to stop then it'll never be mine I think it's time To bring it on Everything new Everything different Oh, everything true I am ready For my next thing to do Oh, I know It's gonna be everything publication that brings to us each day a wonderful inspirational message. It's our daily word and I'll invite Linda Hardy to come forward and read our daily word for us. We'll follow that with a time of mindfulness and uh, a time of prayer. So allow yourselves to begin relaxing and moving into that consciousness. Good morning. Today's word is divine order, and the affirmation is, I see divine order expressing everywhere. I delight in the glorious colors, fragrances, and arrangement of plants in a garden. I celebrate the imagination, the meticulous planning, and the diligent work that transformed a patch of ground, some seeds, water, and fertilization, in, fertilizer into a beautiful life-filled place. I recognize the role of divine order in the creation of this garden, expressing through everyone who worked to bring it into being. It began as an idea in divine mind. Someone received the idea, cooperating minds developed a plan Willing hands prepared soil, planted seeds, then watered and tended the growing plants. My spiritual vision perceives divine order, the eternal dance of mind, idea, and manifestation expressing everywhere. And from Genesis 1, 31, God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Today's word is divine order and the affirmation, I see divine order expressing everywhere. Linda, thank you. So I invite you to just Take this time for yourself to recognize this is this wonderful time of common union, communion, connection, oneness, by turning within and experiencing 
the ever-presence, the omnipresence of infinite spirit. So I invite you to breathe, to relax, to let go, to whatever thoughts from the past week or the things that are still on the to-do list in the week ahead. We just embrace them and yet set them aside for this now moment in order to be immersed in infinite spirit. To be uplifted and renewed with each breath that we take. And I will sound our toning bowl, our singing bowl, which resonates at the musical energetic vibration of the heart chakra. And as I do so, let the energy waves of the universe, of this music, this toning, move through your entire being, resonating and dancing with all the cells in your body, with all the thoughts in your mind, opening your heart to the infinite flow of spirit. And such a wondrous time it is as we recognize the magnitude of that greater self of who we are. While we acknowledge and honor our human physical body, we know that within that expression there is the soul being the greater expression of all light, of all love, unconditional, gracious. We just relax into that knowingness. And we recognize the seed ideas the inspiration, like the seeds that are planted, the bulbs that are planted in the springtime, the petals of the flowers of the trees and the leaves that begin to push their way up through the soil or begin to unfurl on the limbs of the trees or at the end of the stalk of a flowering bush. We see this as the divine flow, the divine order of all of creation. Feeling the light of the sun which metaphysically is the awareness of infinite spirit that shines upon us, that illuminates us from within, that calls us to blossom forth, to spring into a new expression. As we release and we let go of the things of the past, the ideas that have kept us bound in limitation, we acknowledge our true infinite nature. And we bask in that. 
as that sunlight within us shines, the sunlight out on our planet shines, as our hearts unfurl and open, as our minds are receptive. We align ourselves and are at one with infinite spirit. All wisdom, all creative ideas, all healing support, the love that comforts through grieving or sorrow, that comforts when we have concerns or are afraid, the strength of that light and love are ever present to remind us of that which is the limitless truth, divine order outwardly manifesting for greatest good. So we take a moment to just bask in this light. To feel it flowing within us and all around us. As we allow ourselves to rest for a moment in the silence. In that oneness of connection. In the oneness of spirit. In silence. And as we bask in this inner light and the outer expression, we let our light flow forth to bless others as well, to be that connection that brings us together, that helps us to hold each other's hands, to serve each other, to be uplifted, to be inspired. So we take a moment now to speak aloud the names of loved ones, of friends, of situations in our lives and in our world that we would especially bless at this time. Tim, Georgia, Linda, Vicki, Evan, Donlan. Teresa, Unity of Michiana, Unity Worldwide Ministries and World Headquarters, those people around the world who are seeking freedom, abundance, a life well lived, our world leaders. We are grateful for this activity of spirit that surrounds and uplifts, that honors and blesses. 
So together we pray this forth through the intention of our consciousness that calls upon highest infinite spirit. We say thank you, and so it is. Amen. surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release every fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am stronger every moment, every I will, am willing, and my heart is open wide. I trust my instinct and let spirit be my guide. I vow to live a life that's real and true and free as I continue walking in this mystery. So Rachel and Ariana perform this wonderful song, but um, it's a Shirley Caesar version. Um, we've been talking about this for a long time. I, she brought it up a l long time ago when there's a lot of weird political stuff going on. Um, so I thought that's a good good song for uh, for the new member service. and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place if you can reach out and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place if you can take a little time out of your busy day to give encouragement to someone who's lost their way Oh, would I be talking to a stone If I asked you to share a problem that's not your own We can change things if we start giving Why don't you reach out and touch with somebody's, somebody's hand, hand. Make, make this world a better place if you can, can reach out and touch somebody's, somebody's hand. hand make, make this world a better place if you can if you see an old friend on the street and it's down remember his shoes could fit your feet Try a little kindness and you'll see It's something that really comes Very naturally We can change things If we start giving Why don't you Reach out and touch Reach out and touch Somebody's hand oh.
Somebody's, somebody's hand Make this, make this world, world a better place, better place. If, you if you can, can reach out oh, somebody's I know you can Make this world a better make place Make it a better place If you can, if you can reach out Somebody's hand Make this world a better place can reach out and touch with somebody's hand and make this world a better place. If you can, if you can, thank you. Rachel thank you so much <clears throat> and how appropriate because I know we were going to do reach out and touch somebody's hand a few weeks ago that's right and yet it is just so appropriate for this Sunday which uh, is uh, we are going to be at the end of our service receiving in two new members to our congregation and so that is a wonderful time to talk about spiritual community and and what that means to us so uh, perfect timing, as it is, you know, it's divine order, <clears throat> as Daily Word said for today. Excuse me. So my talk title is uh, Spiritual Community Connecting Together, Making a Difference. And I originally uh, was going to do one talk, and then I realized there was an awful lot <laughs> to put in there. So I've kind of split it into two parts. I'm going to talk about spiritual community and connecting together this Sunday and next Sunday, I'm going to talk about making a difference in spiritual community and how, how we are each a part of doing that and taking that out into our world. And so I just kind of wanted to talk, first of all, about spiritual community. And, and what, what does that mean to each of you? What is that? And I'd love to have those of you who are at home to kind of post a, a word or two if you'd care to around spiritual community and oftentimes in unity we talk about spiritual versus religious <clears throat> and and our world has been evolving and changing so much and and covid even accelerated a lot of that growing and that changing in concepts of what was important to us spiritually what was important to us religiously how do we show up what is the difference? <clears throat> Excuse me. And I want to share something, and Susan, there is not um, a slide for this. Um, but I, I really liked, uh, this is Giovanni um, Diedstrom, and he says, Religion asks you to believe. Spirituality asks you to look. Religion has dogmas. Spirituality has wisdom teachings. Religion wants obedience, spirituality wants experimentation. Religion speaks of sin and hell, spirituality speaks of self-responsibility. Religion wants to comfort you, spirituality wants to liberate you. Religion is external, spirituality is internal. Religion is the form Spirituality is the essence. Religion wants to convert you, and spirituality wants to inspire you. Religion is an institution. Spirituality is a journey. And in this day and age, as things, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of, um, of allergies with springtime out there, so pardon me. With things changing so much and the choicefulness of how do we show up in our world? What's important to us? How do we face the challenges of our lives? How do we interrelate with each other? And is there a continued focus on that which is called religion or the structure of church and dogma? Or are we shifting greatly into a time where people are seeking their own spirituality 
and understanding their own inherent connection to infinite spirit, their own inherent divinity. As Jesus said, these things shall ye do and even greater. Leading us into that understanding of our own connection to that which is greater than self. And so when we look at what is a spiritual community to us and how do we show up, it's a wonderful thing to recognize sort of the conundrum or the dichotomy of this internal journey, seeking to know, to understand, to connect to the divine, yet also recognizing the importance in our humanity of then reaching out and touching someone's hand, reaching out and connecting and being one with others. In scripture from uh, Matthew 18, 20, it says, and this speaks to spiritual community, it says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Now we know that this doesn't mean there is a God out there that waits until <laughs> two or three of us get together and, and, and then God will sort of come into that space. What this says, friends, is when we connect and are with each other, when we bring our authentic self, our hearts, our being, our vulnerability, and gather with another. In that moment, there's connection. And in that moment, there the I amness, the divineness is present and exchanged. Connection is so vital and important. <clears throat> From 1 Peter 2, uh, verse 5a, you also as living stones, as living beings, are being built up as a spiritual house. Now, so this refers to us not only personally, the spirituality of our own houseness, but also how we connect with each other, how we come together in community to make a difference in our world. Susan, did anyone post anything of what spiritual community meant to them? Okay. Well, feel free to go ahead and do that. So some comments from from you who were here in the room. What does spiritual community mean to you? I love to put everybody on the spot. You know, is it there? Oh, well, wait, I don't know. I come here on a Sunday. I participate in lots of things. Yeah. Yes, Kelsey. A group of like-minded people. Like people. Can we get an amen? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, well, Holding a space. Oh, Sue Ellen, man, you just hit it right on the nail on the head because absolutely spiritual community is holding that space. And whether it's in an actual building, whether it's where two or more are gathered, it's the consciousness that we hold together, which, which both Kelsey said and, and Sue Ellen, anybody else did I? Absolutely, John. The, the people around us that we trust and that we exchange with and, and we're, we're willing to be our authentic self and, and which is pretty vulnerable at times as opposed to, you know, the smiley face and, you know, all the, the social norms out there. We let our heart show whether we're grieving, whether we're happy and excited, whether we're trying to face a challenge. You know, it's about coming together and being with people that we care about and trust. Tara, um, I'm sorry, um, Tony Blackshaw, who is a, a pre professor of sociology and an author, he says, it feels good to be in community. Community, above all, is bigger than individuals. We are something much more than individuals when we are part of a community, friends. Spirituality and community are not a solo endeavor, though we oftentimes feel that way because, as it says, it's about turning within. But in truth principles and unity principles, it's also about then letting that light shine forth to connect with others. Oh, yeah, Susan, go ahead. So Mary Stewart says, uh, living in harmony with one another. Living in harmony with one another. 
Awesome. Wow. That Absolutely. It's finding that way in a world that seems disharmonious, does it not, with people at opposite ends of political beliefs, with bullying in schools, we've talked about that, with bullying in the workplace. Spiritual community invites us to be a willingness to explore within ourselves, to face our own things in order to come forth and then live together in harmony. Tara Brock, who's a psychologist and an author, she says the spiritual path is not a solo endeavor. We are in it together, and the company of spiritual friends helps us realize our interconnectedness. John, that's what you were saying. Those people you can count on and trust. And, and so why is spiritual community then important? Because people say, well, I can go and, 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 and be in nature or pray to God or be connected to spirit in the silence or off on my own. And that's absolutely true. And it is a part of our spiritual journey, but it's only the beginning part, friends. And the purpose of coming together and being here as humanity is how we begin to learn connecting with each other when we have differences of opinion, when we have uh, uh, different ethnic backgrounds, when we have different belief systems. It's about a willingness to share, to be present, to hold each other's hand, reach out and, and touch another's hand. Spiritual community is so important where we can come together. Because I, I, I don't know about you, but man, I, I can go along and I can be doing my work and thinking I'm doing just fine. But there's a whole shadow part of me over here I'm not seeing. When I'm with one of my dear friends, when I'm in my spiritual community, with someone who authentically cares, who is not there to judge me or make me wrong, but who is there to support me, taps me on the shoulder and says, Sandy, let's go have a little talk. Or, have you thought about? Or, in conversation together, it comes forth. And it might not have otherwise. And so, spiritual community and being with each other is, is so, so vital to support each other. Living a spiritual life, friends, as I said before, is more than a soul endeavor. And, and how many of us like to kind of disappear and it used to sort of be, let's go to the hilltop and then we'll be spiritual. Let's let go of our humanity and then we'll be spiritual. And we are learning now that that the whole purpose of spirituality is bringing that into and embracing our humanness and putting them forth together and being with one another. We can't live on the hilltop. It's about living with each other, being in our world differently. <clears throat> uh, cardinal Vincent Nichols, who's a British cardinal and an archbishop, says, we're losing social skills, the human interaction skills, how to read a person's mood, to read their body language, how to be patient until the moment is right to make or press a point. Too much exclusive use of electronic information dehumanizes what is a very, very important part of community life and living together. How much time do we spend on our computers, our cell phones, our laptops, our tablets, and our the current younger generation tends to communicate a great deal through this wonderful technology. Now, I'm not putting down the technology. I'm grateful for that. Yet, let us understand the importance, though, of also setting the, the technology down in order to really know ourselves. How many of you have read somebody's text and you got ticked off because you thought it said blah, 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 blah. Daily, I do that. I'm like, well, man. They're upset with me, or my gosh, you know, and then I'm like, uh, do I say something back? I don't know. And, and then I'll be talking with them, and then I'll kind of like, mm, I wasn't so sure about, and then they say something 
could have been, oh, I was falling asleep when I said, sent that text. I'm so sorry, that's not what I meant. Or it could be, oh, you know, this is what I was actually saying. And I go, oh. And, and it's oftentimes really hard to, <laughs> to really read between the lines or to truly understand what a text message or an email is saying. And that's why it's so vital, friends, to come together. Oh, I'm sorry. And um, Mitsugi uh, Seotome, who is um, a Japanese um, Aikido teacher, he's famous and well-known, he says, if you were all alone in the universe with no one to talk to, no one with which to share the beauty of the stars, to laugh with, to touch, what would be your purpose in life? Be hard to text somebody too, wouldn't it? <laughs> if you were in the world all by yourself. It is other life, he says. It is love which gives your life meaning. We must discover the joy of each other, the joy of challenge, the joy of growth. And that is a part, friends, of coming together in spiritual community. And a part why sometimes we stay away. Because we are seen. And, and because at times we might feel judged, we might, it might feel a little bit scared or uncomfortable with coming out and being able to be who we are. And, and yet, spiritual community is about growing. It's about working with each other. It's the same thing as family systems. We get triggered by each other, but then we come together and we talk and we work through. So spiritual community is vital <clears throat> and important for all of us, whether you're an extrovert and love to be around people. Extroverts are also capable of hiding in a large group or in a small group of people because they can put forth the smiley face and all of this and be out there, and yet they're not fully present. And then for introverts who like to just kind of be quiet and be in the back. It's also a real part of spiritual community, though, to still show up because the essence of who you are shines through regardless. And you bring the light of a sensitivity, of a quietness that you can share with others. So it doesn't matter whether you're extrovert or introvert. It's still important to come together, to learn from each other, to grow uh, with each other. Many of you um, are very familiar with um, uh, international speaker uh, Brene Brown, an author. She writes about um, vulnerability and authenticity. Um, and this is um, a reading from her book, The Gifts of um, Imperfection. She says, one of the greatest barriers to connection is the cultural importance we place on going it alone. How many of you, well, you probably, most of you are not old enough to remember the commu commercial that said, Mother, I'd rather do it myself. Okay, some of you remember. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm giving away my age here. But, you know, we, we'll look at all the ways, though, that we tend to want to go on our own because we can hide. Because the things that maybe we don't do perfectly or don't do up to what we consider, you know, a standard that we should, or we think other people think we should, we tend to, I'll just, I'll just go on my own. Now, it doesn't mean that going on your own is a bad thing. It means that it's important to do both. So I should probably finish the quote that I'm reading. Somehow we've come to equate success with not needing anyone. Anybody relate to that? Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Many of us are willing to extend a helping hand, but we're very reluctant to reach out for help when we need it ourselves. Most of us know that because we came through mistaken religious ideas, belief systems that told us it's better to give than to receive, and we don't understand that we have to be connected into ourselves and open to ourselves in order to give. And, and so we start within ourselves first. And 
And it isn't about, you know, it's very easy. If I've got stuff going on, I'm like, well, pff, I'll just ignore that, right? Oh, I'll be over here. I'll be a good person. I'll be doing all this out here, right? And I'm not dealing with me. When we come together in spiritual community, we're seen. Whether we have people that participate with us uh, via live stream, who post statements, who post um, the, uh, um, hellos, and, 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 and they talk with each other um, <clears throat> during the service, and they are seen also, and their energy contributes, as well as each of you who are here, and we all show up and are seen in different ways, and we all contribute to spiritual community in different ways. And there's not a right way and a wrong way. It is, though, a matter of taking a look at self and saying, how do I show up? What's important to me? How am I willing to be there with myself and as myself in order to support others who are doing the same thing? <clears throat> Brene goes on to say, it's as, um, so she had said, none of, <laughs> many of us are, um, are willing to extend a helping hand, but we're very reluctant to reach out for help when we need it ourselves. It's as if we've divided the world into those who offer help and those who need help. The truth is, we are both. And it's so important because in spiritual community, it enables us to recognize and understand that better. Scripture supports us in this, in, in a reading from 1 Corinthians 14, 26. What should be done then, my friends? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. We're each individuals. We all have gifts to share that are unlike any other. And when we show up, when we show up, We, we get our back patted because, especially if we have a little cough in our, <laughs> Ella's going, Mom, but isn't that true how, man, if I were kind of down, I'd sure want somebody to give me a hug or pat me on the back to make me feel comfortable, to make me feel loved and cared about. And that's why it is important to be seen and to actually come together as we're able and from Acts 2, 46 through 47, it says, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God, friends. Every day they come together. Now, that doesn't mean we come here every day. But it does mean our consciousness is with each other, supporting each other. It's with ourselves and with others all the time to know that we are part of a greater spiritual community. So in connecting together, how do we take steps to do that? How do we show up? And again, not everyone shows up in the same way. Someone might serve here on a committee. Someone might want to hold prayer space for others. We all show up differently, yet it's important to be willing to take that step to reach out and to um, connect. <clears throat> Daisuko Aikida, who is a Japanese Buddhist philosopher and an author, says, There is no true joy in a life lived closed up in the little shell of the self. When you take one step to reach out to people, when you meet with others and share their thoughts and sufferings, infinite compassion and wisdom well up within your heart and your life is transformed. That's what spiritual community is about. And uh, Brandon Jenner, who um, is a singer, a songwriter, a TV personality, he says, and this is wonderful, Gen X, Gen Z, you know, these are wisdoms from our young people who are on reality TV. We can bring positive energy into our daily lives by smiling more, talking to strangers in line, replacing handshakes with hugs, and calling our friends just to tell them we love them. This is wisdom out of our up-and-coming youth who recognize that 
spiritual community is about the consciousness that you hold within your being. In scripture from 1 John 1, 7a, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. When we are willing to walk in our authentic selves and share with one another, we have fellowship. And from Proverbs 21, 21, Whoever pursues righteousness, and that's not a supercilious, I'm better than thou type of thing. Righteousness is right useness of our soul being. Whoever pursues right useness and kindness will find life and honor. And so in this week to come, in beginning to take steps to connect, maybe differently than you have, I'm going to give you a little um, exercise through the week. And I'm going to invite you to think of maybe two or three people you haven't been in touch with for a while, a couple of months, three or four years, somebody who maybe you feel estranged from or someone who you just haven't had the time or taken the time to say, hey, I miss you. I love you. Um, I'm sorry. Think of two to three people, send them a text, send them an email, send them a card, Call them on the phone. Take the time to allow the heart of your being to connect to the heart of someone else. Reach out and touch someone and begin that practice of being together, whether here physically in this room as spiritual community or as the light of spirituality expressing out into our world. And in closing, I will share a quote from the Dalai Lama. Most of you are familiar that he is the highest spiritual leader and the head of the Tibetan um, Buddhist movement. When we feel love and kindness towards others, it not only makes others feel loved and cared for, but it helps us also to develop inner happiness and peace, friends. Let's begin practicing, practicing being in spiritual community wherever we are throughout the week, throughout our days. And I'll look forward next week to talking about how as spiritual community and as we begin to take these steps and as we begin to practice, we can make a difference in our world. And so at this point, as we are receiving in our new members, I would invite Misty Singh and Kelsey Cahoon to please Step forward and uh, you can face everyone here. So I'd like to present you each with this oh, with a rose. And now, um, so, and I didn't, I I called them, but you may not know who is who. So, of course, this is Kelsey, and this is Misty, and we have a song that congregation is going to sing to you. Everyone join in. In the life of God, I A great peace too I can see the whole and free I behold the love and turn. I can see you feel with power I can membership certificate and a little pamphlet. Kelsey, here is yours. 
And now I will read the membership covenant that they have each signed. And so when I complete this, please um, agree to this covenant. I understand and am aligned with the basic teachings of unity. I understand unity of Michiana Spiritual Center is based on the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ. I will make my spiritual unfoldment and relationship with God an important part of my life. I will do my part to support the Spiritual Center's mission of teaching, motivation, empowering, and supporting people in their growth and transformation through the application of spiritual principles. I will join my fellow members and congregants in participating in the creation of a respectful, loving, and safe environment where love is felt and lives are changed. I will extend myself with loving warmth to newcomers to my spiritual center home and to those people attending whom I don't know. I will include the spiritual center and the minister, that would be me, in my prayer life, and I am grateful, as we are all grateful, for being held in your prayer life. I will give to Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center from a consciousness of love and of joy. I will serve this ministry in ways and to the degree that I am able, thereby strengthening the whole group while learning the value of selfless service to others. I will speak with constructive purpose about the spiritual center and my fellow congregants. If I experience personal upset with the spiritual center, minister, or a congregant, I will seek guidance from God's spirit and then speak with and resolve any upset with the persons involved. I recognize that my presence and participation at Sunday services, classes, and activities are a contribution and gift that enhance the experience to all, yet I know I am free to choose to what degree I will attend and participate. As part of the family of Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center, through the omnipresent wisdom and guidance of God, I join together with one and all in co-creating the ongoing dynamic life and expression of this spiritual center. I recognize that together we support keeping its doors open and expanding its programs, thereby blessing and serving others like myself. Through membership in unity, I honor God in myself, God in others, and God at work through Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center and the surrounding community. Misty and Kelsey have already signed this. It's a part of their packet. And will you pledge in front of the congregation and say, yes, I so pledge. Yes, I so pledge. Yes, I so pledge. Thank you. And now we'll invite you to sing with us. We'll all sing together one of my favorite Daniel Namod songs, My Soul is Welcome Here. Right time. I'm in just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where Let's I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message out and clear. My soul is Ah, oh, blessings, and let's rub our hands together, let's welcome them, yes, and we rub our hands together and we say we see the light of the Christ shining through you and we're grateful. We see the light of Christ shining through you and we are grateful. Blessings and welcome. Thanks so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and let me just quickly run through a couple of announcements. Um, 
the Wednesday Zoom group that has been meeting has uh, decided to continue for another five weeks in, in uh, reading together uh, the book, uh, um, um, Discover Your Divinity, A Modern Guide to Affirmative Prayer. We meet through Zoom, by Zoom, on Wednesday evenings from about 6 to about 7.15. We follow the discussion with a time of meditation and prayer. All are welcome to join in with that. So that will be continuing. And then we want to be sure you have on your calendar our next fun activity uh, day, our fun and games day here at Unity, Sunday, April 28th. Um, and so there'll be games for adults and games for the kids and just a fun time to be had with all. And um, I, I believe the committee that's working on that, uh, Chrissy and um, and Colleen, are going to make an announcement, I think, next Sunday. Is, um, I don't know. Or not. Or somebody's going to make an announcement about, because it does say more um, information to follow. So we'll, we'll get that down and we'll, we'll put that up. Um, consider bringing one of your friends or guests to come. This is a wonderful way to build spiritual community and, and to invite people to have a sense of what's available to them here at Unity of Michiana. So that concludes our announcements, and I'll invite you now to just breathe into the consciousness of the all-sufficiency of infinite spirit. That is abundance, abundance in finances, abundance in relationships, abundance in the flow of life, the breath of life. And we are grateful here at Unity of Michiana for all of your contributions. They are our um, sole support in keeping uh, our church, our, our spiritual center moving forward. So we invite, I invite you just to hold your hands. This always, to me, represents the infinity symbol. Ever ongoing, all abundance. And, and so as you hold your love offering in your hand in this way, if you are online, you can, uh, or here in the congregation, you can go on your phone, you can go to our Unity app, you can go to unitymichiana.org and make a donation, or, or you can um, take a picture of one of our Q our codes and, and send something that way. We're so blessed and we're so grateful. So affirm together with me our prosperity affirmation. I give and receive with gratitude in my heart, knowing God is my infinite supply of prosperous good. And so we give thanks in the flow of infinite spirit that is Manifesting forward infinite abundance, infinite grace, infinite connection. And for the gifts that are given and the gifts that return to these givers heaped up and overflowing, we say thank you. Infinite spirit flow of life, beloved God. And so it is. Amen. And now, if you'll all rise, we'll join in singing our peace song and follow that with our prayer for protection. Sun and the wind and rain bring everything we need. Father, sky above, Mother, earth beneath. Peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth. Sisters and brothers of all the world, lift our voices high in one joyous sound. Peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth. And so I invite you not to forget to reach out to someone you have not been in touch with for a while. One or two or three people make a specific effort to connect and notice how it feels in that wonderful connection. Blessings, everyone. Have a great week. Look forward to next week and how indeed we as spiritual community can make a difference. My blessings. Go in light.
Oh, shoot. We get extra music because I forgot the prayer protection. See the prayer protection in your heart. Yes. Yeah. 